He was a drifter, moving from town to town, robbing a gas station here, a grocery store there, until one night. She was coming home from choir practice, but she never got there. Stoff took her purse and ran away. He spent, Stoff had to run and hide. He sunk even lower. He had nothing. No life, no possessions, no dreams. Stoff went to town, to a bar. The owner had a daughter. Ooh, he said his girl would love the strange doll. And Stoff offered it to the man. And the owner, in turn, offered Stoff food and a place to stay. A simple transaction. The first of many. Stoff created the puzzle, just as he saw it, and everyone wanted one. Stoff opened up a shop, because everyone wanted a Stoff toy. Every boy and girl in the town, and from all the neighboring towns. A Stoff toy is a toy for life, people said, and no two are alike. Stoff grew wealthy, but then the strange virus came, and some of the children started dying. <coughs> dying, clutching their Stoff toys so close. And there 
was this one last vision, a last dream of a great house, a mansion that the wealthy toy maker was to build. A strange house, a house that scared. Well, welcome everybody. I wanted to step back and uh, take a few minutes just to let you enjoy the intro. I'm guessing that those of you who have found this video know what you're looking at, but in case you don't, this is a Let's Play of The Seventh Guest by Virgin Interactive, uh, 1992 or 93 release, not sure which, originally developed by Trilobite Software. Um, you saw the credits, and so basically this game was recently released on goodoldgames.com, and when I saw that it was available, I snatched it up immediately and said, I think this is going to be my next Let's Play. So, you know me by now, you know my work. For those of you who are new, welcome. Um, for those returning, I thank you for coming back and checking out more of my work. So, a little backstory. Let's, let's talk about the game a little bit. Um... I did a test run of this earlier, so I'm not sure how much of this I might be repeating myself. <laughs> and I like to go about this fairly unscripted, but I'm going to try to recall as much as I can about this. This was, at the time, just a monumental effort and a total game changer for adventure games and technology at the time. It built off of, you know, it, it came from the, the, uh, the mist popularity of the sort of adventure game where you're just kind of clicking through screens and finding your way around. And this, at the time, like I said, at the time, this was just monumental. It forced technology, and it forced consumers to upgrade their technology just to be able to play it. I had a single-speed CD-ROM at the time, and suffice it to say, the movies and the animations were so slow and so choppy that it was just completely unplayable. Yeah, I mean, it was just unplayable at the time, so I had to upgrade my computer software just to be able to play this. And I would not actually end up playing it, and this is kind of a funny story, I would not end up playing this until there I was about maybe 12 years old and in the 6th grade, and we had a snow day. And what happened was, we got there, it was snowing, and it really started snowing down really hard, and so after about an hour of school, the call came down that, cl that school was cancelled, and so most of us, coming from far away, couldn't leave, because the roads were so terrible. So what happened was, the teachers just decided to kind of give us recess all day, basically. 
you know, we couldn't go outside, and so many of us naturally gravitated towards the computer room that was available. And some people played other games. I decided I wanted to play this game. I got a couple people together, and we played it. I think we played it on a Mac. I'm currently playing on a PC. And I think the Macintosh version didn't come out until later. Because I know I was 12 when I played this. And that was a bit about 1994. So, yeah. Anyway, this game went on to receive so many awards. Bill Gates actually uh, came out and championed it, basically saying it was one of the greatest, you know, it, it set the standard, it set the benchmark. So anyway, enough of my blathering. Let's talk about the game itself. So, as you can see, there's not a lot of backstory. You know, you know very little about what's going on, and that's that's part of the intrigue. The narrator you heard a little bit ago, the character that we play has no idea how he got here, no clue. You saw people walking around. You don't know who they are. So why don't we explore a little bit? As you can see, we've got this fun little icon here. And if it's going like that, it means you can't go that direction. If it goes like that, it means you can go that direction. You can turn. Got your options up here. You can save the game. You can look at a map, which is very useful. Why don't we do that? So all this is are the rooms that we can access. If there's a room that's grayed out, like this one, it means we can't get there yet. So, or whited out. The grayed ones, we can. If we look at the second floor, you can see that we can't really do much of anything. There's nothing available. And this is what made this game really intriguing to me at the time, was because instead of just being able to explore a creepy old house, you know, a haunted mansion, you can only access certain rooms, and the only way to access other rooms are to search around and solve puzzles. Now this game is uh, your classic puzzler. Very manipulable puzzles where you, sometimes you can play around with them and make it work, sometimes you have to solve riddles. I mean, you know, Nothing I say can possibly set you up for this. Either you've played it and you know exactly what I'm talking about, or you have not and you have no clue what I'm talking about. So why don't we just take a look through it and you can find out for yourself. First person perspective. Um, I did a little research and I found out that there's a nice little uh, making of feature that comes with this game. And it talks about how the crew originally wanted to do uh, live filming and they wanted it to be video but the cost of that was just very prohibitive and it was much more effective just to do this 3D rendering that they did as you can see obviously it's not 3D it's uh, you know it's created to look like that so just to show you what I was talking about as far as uh, being able to access certain areas now see look I can't go through that door and I think that's another thing that's rather clever about this. It never, like, things just change. Things change in the mansion as you solve the puzzles, and it never gives any explanation as to why or what's happening. I think it, it lends a real sense of dread and uh, uncertainty as to what's going on. You never really know what's going on until you start solving the puzzles. So why don't we get to work? like a dining room. I guess our host wants us to fend for ourselves. <laughs> oh, his death there. At least he left his regrets. I'll show you mine, if you show me yours. I, uh, I don't know. Uh... Oh, it says that we're each to have a piece. Exactly the same, including the symbols. But that's impossible. <laughs> 